and so just before um, you start with your presentation, gentlemen, I just wanted to mention who we have on the call tonight. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, so um, myself, Bill Dwyer, uh, whoop, my screen keeps moving here, Crystal <laughs> um, and Sean Barry are all sitting members of the ha Housing and Economic Development Committee. Um, Tony Maroulis is here representing the University of Massachusetts. Um, and he has been invited to be a, a kind of a, an ongoing non-voting member of the committee, if I can put it that way. Um, but he will be here as often as he can to um, keep us abreast of what's happening with the university and to make sure that the university knows what we're talking about as well. Um, and then uh, Justin Pland, Pland or Pland? Pland. Justin, you can correct me. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, it's Pelland. Pelland, okay. Um, so Justin Pelland is interested in being um, on the committee at some point. So we're talking about uh, the possibility of having him be an alternate um, to replace Crystal, who was just formally named to the committee. Um, and Justin, uh, as you can see from his Zoom description here, um, is an architect with uh, Shepley Bullfinch, and he is a Hadley resident, so he um, brings a lot of good information to the group. Um, so he's going great. to be sitting in the first time this evening. All right. Okay. Yeah. So with that, um, Veritas, what is it you would like to share with us? Yeah, pr appreciate it, Molly, and thanks for the introductions. Nice to see everyone and nice to meet everyone uh, who we have not had the opportunity to meet as well. Um, I'm going to share my screen here as we get okay. going. Okay. Perfect. So you, Thanks. Thanks, yeah, Todd. Give me, give me one second here, Adam. Um, okay. Your presentation. So you guys tell me, can you see the screen? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. So, uh, by way of introduction, my name is Adam Saxon. Um, I'm with Trinitas Ventures. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate, appreciate everyone's time. Um, I'm on the acquisition side here and, and my job is to, you know, try to locate well-located property and, and work with the landowner and, um, you know, introduce the opportunity to our investment committee and, you know, try to really see and, and fulfill a, a really exciting development opportunity. So um, we, we also have Todd Wendell and Austin Tracy also both with, Trinitas on the call. They're they're more of the you know the project uh, executives and, and development ops who really help lead the the charge on the entitlement effort. Um, so just by way of background, you know Trin Trinitas Ventures were a, a family business. Uh, Mike, the the founder, he's he's kind of always been involved in real estate. And um, prior to creating Trinitas, um, you know, and then formula uh, form uh, more formally you know created the the company back in 2008 so uh quite the time to uh, become a developer but um he did bring on his his two sons um to kind of take things to the next level um lauren king he's our ceo and chris king is uh, our head of construction so really kind of a good culture good environment um you know as it's a a real estate family family business, if you will. So, um, you know, we're we're a multifamily developer. We've built in fifteen states. We've completed over thirty developments all over the country, ranging from, you know, high rise buildings, three to four story garden uh, product apartment buildings, townhomes, um, and and cottage style uh, developments. Um, you know, we have we have pipeline. Um, ranging all over the country as well. So we're, we're still very active, um, even amid, you know, certainly unique uh, times uh, right now um, being a developer. So, um, you know, by way of introducing the, this project, we really do envision this to be a multifamily community development with, you know, working professionals, um, you know, families. I think, you know, there's, there's certainly no de denying that students will live here. I think given, just given the proximity to UMass, um, you know, ha having said that, however, our, our cottage style developments, they really do lend itself to being more geared towards that mature 
uh, upperclassmen, the grad students, you're kind of looking for more of a, of a quiet um, kind of environment. So, um, you know, I think interest rates uh, kind of on another note, interest rates have, uh, as we all know, they've increased and it's just changed the landscape of, of buying a home. Um, renting really provides just a, a little bit more flexibility in today's day and age. Um, you know, people who simply don't want the headache of managing a home and, and fixing the roof and the gutter and the landscaping, all those things that we all do and uh, don't maybe love to do them on a daily basis. Um, you know, I think, you know, the, the for rent product also gives people who are moving to the area um, and who don't necessarily want to buy a home, um, you know, they can rent first and, and get acclimated to, to Hadley and, and kind of, um, you know, get acclimated and check it out before they kind of set in stone by a home and, you know, kind of hard to, to pivot from that perspective. So, um, you know, there's, there's also people that are building or even rehabbing their home and, you know, always nice to have a place to live during, during construction. So, um, in our, in our pro proposed development, we're, you know, we're including a mix of residential product types that, you really help kind of differentiate the, the, the product um, we're doing, we're including cottages and townhomes. So there's really a, a nice, you know, village look and feel. We're very, we're, we've, we're trying to be very mindful of, you know, the local aesthetic and, and kind of creating a, a colonial townhome kind of courtyard experience um, when you, when you first, you know, drive into the, the development. So we'll, we'll further get into that, but you know, in terms of kind of what we look for, you know, it, it does check all the boxes from a multifamily perspective, you know, good visibility, easy access, proximity to retail. Um, so the site really has all of that. Um, you know, our, our goal is to just be open-minded. We want to listen. We want to collaborate. We want to better understand what, what we can do to, to make this a great development and a, and, you know, a value add to the community. Um, so again, we we're very excited to be here. We very much appreciate your time and I will, um, you know, let Todd kind of further describe our, our efforts, uh, to, to date. Thanks Adam. You know, it's a little weird here. I see the presentation, but I'm not seeing your faces. So, uh, I, I'm going to, we have about 20 minutes, so I'm going to, I'm going to move pretty quickly through the slides here and we can hopefully circle back at the end and uh, answer any questions you have, but we can keep this, uh, it, it probably, we usually do this a little more informal. If you guys want to jump in with questions, comments, concerns, uh, as we go from kind of topic to topic, slide to slide, that's fine as well. Um, you know, for the benefit of those seeing this for the first time, I think, oh, you know what, let me, let me. I'm going to fast forward to our to the master plan here. For the benefit of those seeing it for the first time, I think it's probably good to start kind of at a high level and describe what we're proposing here. So, and Adam touched on a little bit of this stuff. So this is a multifamily for rent community. It will be professionally managed. We will have on-site leasing and management. As Adam mentioned, we're going to have a mix of building types. We're going to have a mix of building or, or unit sizes, everything from one bedroom on up. Um, we will deal with all of our parking requirements on site. Uh, we will also include an amenity building, uh, community building, I should say. And within that community building, we'll have leasing and management. Uh, we'll also have social spaces for residents, including a lounge and a business center, a fitness center. And then uh, we'll have some exterior spaces too. And that would include things like a pool. Um, we did meet uh, way back in, when was it? Mid-December, Molly? Uh, with you and Randy, and uh, we got some really constructive feedback um, on, 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 on the project. And I wanted to very quickly just touch on some of the highlights there because, you know, it, 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 it plays into how what we're, what we're looking at now is the current plan. So I'll jump back. This is where essentially where we were at back in December. And, you know, some of the criticism, comments, questions, the challenges that Molly and Randy brought to us were as follows. It was, you know, guys, you need to be very sensitive to the surrounding, to the neighbors that are adjacent to this project. You also need to be sensitive to how this project is going to feel from the vantage point of somebody driving down Rocky Hill or North Maple Street, right? Um, 
you know, we want to try and preserve the trees. We want, we want to try and make this project have as little impact on the environment as possible. Uh, we also talked about uh, the affordable housing uh, component. And, you know, our plan is to uh, entitle this as a friendly chapter 40B. So um, we did include a slide to kind of dig into the details of how this project will impact Hadley's affordable housing stock. So we can, we can get to that. Uh, they made it very clear that utilities are, are something we would want to get out in front of. Um, and shortly thereafter, we hired Kimley Horn, who is a nationally known civil engineer. They have a local office that did a lot of, of work in, the, in, in this uh, community uh, to help us start to ferret out uh, some of the, the existing utilities to make sure that the infrastructure could actually support something like this. So we have a slide towards the end to kind of dig into the details on that. Uh, in, in terms of the site plan, I mentioned um, creating some sort of a buffer from uh, the uh, surrounding neighbors. Um, I think Molly was one who said, you know what, diversity in, in, in building type would be nice as well. So Adam mentioned that we've, we went from our original plan, which was just cottage to, we had incorporated some townhomes. Uh, we think that will add a little variety to the architecture and the aesthetics of the project, as well as, you know, give people some additional options in terms of, you know, the living units. Um, yeah, so those are kind of the high level things. So let's, let's jump ahead to the current master plan. So, you know, Adam and I went back and uh, we started brainstorming. So um, the big move we made here, and uh, you can probably tell, is that our property line has extended. And we now currently have this 14 acre parcel right here. And I hope you guys can see my cursor under contract. Um, basically it's a forest sandwich between high, the highway 61 and our project. And our thought at this point is that we would take that, that initial notion, let me jump back here, of this small parking lot and this little nature trail and really create something of interest and value for the, not only our residents, they'd have access to it, but you know, also the community at Hadley at large. So um, what you end up with is this 23 acre public nature preserve, we're calling it that, uh, with a trailhead, so to speak, uh, access off of Rocky Hill Road here. Um, we also thought that it'd be nice to include some kind of fun amenities at that trailhead. So the list that we brainstormed was a bocce ball, a pickleball court, maybe a gazebo, a playground for some kids, maybe an electric car charging station. But, um, you know, we'll, of course, work with you to guys in the community to figure out exactly what 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 will bring the most value to uh, to residents there. That That's the big move. Um, we, you know, in order to, you know, addressing the idea of the trees, well, we, we've added this big 14 acre preserve. We're not gonna cut down a tree there. So I think we kind of checked that box. Um, and I don't know if you guys know, noticed in the, 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 uh, the presentation information that we sent to you prior to the meeting, we did include um, some examples of cottages and some townhomes. So you can kind of get a sense of the variety of scale and the, uh, of on the architecture that we're considering. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention here is that because our site has gotten larger, um, our overall density has actually dropped dramatically for this project. Um, you know, we went from roughly six and a half units per acre, we're down, you know, somewhere near five. So it's gotten less dense at the same time. It's, it's really kind of added more value, we think, not only for our residents, but the community. Um, I want to keep rolling here. So, here's kind of the list of the benefits that we that we think we that our project will bring to the Hadley Township and the community. So, you know, obviously there's this affordable housing uh, stock and availability. We certainly will be adding to that. Um, our research shows that you know, really, there's as 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 Adam mentioned, you know, there is a demand for housing. There is a need for housing uh, in Hadley and the surrounding communities, and we are certainly going to add to the market rate housing that's available uh, in this in this neighborhood and the, in this town. Um, we touched on the neighbor nature preserve. Um, probably goes without saying, you know, we're going to obviously there'll be some tax benefit for the town, and um, then of course, you know, I'm going to kind of you know. To, my, to our own home here, we're, we're proud of the communities that we build. And we really think that this would uh, create 
it will enhance Hadley Township and will really provide uh, you know, housing options for, for really anybody looking to rent uh, in Hadley. And then lastly, um, and we can dive into this in a little more detail when we talk about utilities. Um, working with Kimley Horn, um, we've, they, they are telling us that there is a study ongoing in Hadley on how to um, try and adjust some of the sanitary system needs of, of the, the town. And we think that, you know, hey, let's work together. You'll kind of see this on our, on our plan for sanitary. Is there a way we can work together to not only address the, the sanitary requirements for our project, but also uh, piggyback an effort to help out, you know, some larger portion of, of the Hadley Township. Okay, so here again, this is kind of a, this is not specifically what we're proposing for uh, Hadley or for this project, but it, it should give you a sense of the scale and kind of the, the, yeah, the look and feel of it. We fully intend to hire a, uh, an architect, professional architect who is, you know, well-versed in the, the vernacular, East Coast and Hadley vernacular, and we will come up with a design that uh, really kind of reflects, uh, you know, the history uh, and the the architecture of of the of place. So this is this is an example of our cottage, uh, which is a duplex that's two units side by side. And um, then here's the townhome. Here we gave it. She gave you two examples. There's this one, and then actually I like this one better. The second example, and I think as I mentioned before, the townhomes. Yes, these are a little more more dense, but we did. Why don't we jump back to the site plan really quick? We, we located those sort of in the middle of the project. And of course, this is in an effort to have as little impact on that slightly higher dense building on the surrounding community as possible. Okay, so now things get a little boring. Let's talk about how affordable housing statistics. So um, we put together this little slide to kind of give you a sense of uh, where we think Hadley's at now and, and, and how our project will help benefit your affordable housing stock. So, you know, currently how affordable housing stock sits at a, roughly 12%, and that's based on 275 units um, of it, it, that, that, that are within uh, roughly 2,300 uh, units within the within the uh, the township. Uh, there's this Econo Lodge conversion project that is, we're hearing has recently been supported by the planning board and is going through their chapter 40B entitlement process. If you add those 63 units in, you end up at roughly 14%. Um, now with our proposal, the numbers actually jump dramatically and we're, we think we're somewhere roughly just south of 22%. And how we get there is that, um, we are including all 100% all of our units. Um, and the reason we can do that is because we believe that um, the 25% uh, earmarked uh, affordable will meet the income requirements. Uh, and per the rules, if they meet those thresholds, you would count all of 100 units, 100% of the units, excuse me. And then utilities. Um, so again, we've, we've had uh, Kimley Horn engaged and they've done an initial uh, kind of a pass, uh, high level pass of utilities. And um, looks like this isn't, let me see, move it over there. There we go. So kind of running through these very quickly. Um, in terms of water, we're pretty confident that we have sufficient capacities both in Rocky Hill and in North Babel Hill. Gas, we will not be using gas on the project. Uh, this will be fully electric. Uh, telecommunications, we've got multiple service providers in the area. Uh, Eversource has got electrical lines on both Rocky Hill and North Maple. And then, of course, there's the sanitary, which is kind of the, the harder uh, utility to solve. And this heavy dashed dotted black line here represents our initial pass at how to solve that issue. And what we're proposing is to an extension, uh, both forth, with a force main and a pump, uh, to tie into Amherst sewer system right over here at Rocky Hill. And I believe this is university heading kind of planned north south. Um, so going back to our initial conversation about uh, sanitary and some of the challenges uh, in in Hadley, uh, way back in December, uh, you know, our approach and strategy here is to push uh, the sanitary into the Amherst system and not to 
uh, you know, burden the Hadley system, which uh, we believe is is already kind of at capacity. Um, so that that is uh, that is the show here. Um, I think at this point uh, we can kind of open it up for questions. Tom, I don't know, were you able to? Is Tom on at this point? I don't think he was able to join. No, okay. No. Okay. So I he okay that that's fine. If he joins, maybe he'll want to add some color in terms of affordability. But um, you know that's where we're at, guys. Um, you know we'd love to hear what you guys think. And um, you know again, as Adam mentioned, I think our goal here is hopefully to take away some constructive criticism, some questions, um, some challenge you you guys have posed to us, and. Um, you know, we'll get to work and, and see how we can address those issues. Okay, thanks. Well, with that, um, yeah, and, and just um, for anybody who might be watching this meeting too, just being clear that we're acting as a sounding board this evening. Um, we're an advisory group. We have no authority uh, to make any decisions. Um, we can certainly take positions and make recommendations either to the select board or planning board. But again, my understanding tonight is that you're in the initial phases of um, trying to see what might fit in the town of Hadley and you are looking for exactly. some honest yeah. feedback. <laughs> so with that, uh, anybody have any questions or, or comments for Veritas? Or Trinitas, sorry, Veritas. <laughs> what, what are you projecting for traffic impact Traffic impact. Yes, we um, we are. Kimley Horn is. We're just getting going on on an initial traffic analysis. So, um, I, what I can tell you is that we're we're on top of it, and you know, you give us a little bit of time, and, and we can certainly come back with some preliminary, um, you know, stats in terms of traffic. I think that sort of ties into. Uh, and, and by the way, for for background, I suppose I. Um, uh, Tom, Tom would know this stuff off the top of his head, but I am on the planning board. So uh, we would be definitely concerned about something like traffic impact. Both uh, North Maple and Rocky Hill Road are pretty much at or over capacity, especially with the Route 9 mm -hmm. ongoing construction. Uh, so adding more traffic there would... Uh, not be a goal. Okay, well, you know, we, here's what we can do. We, we will get going on that immediately. And as soon as we get some initial feedback, we can, we can certainly share that with this group. Uh, one comment I'll make in, in, uh, in understanding that this is a, certainly a game of numbers. Um, for you, you know, as a developer. But I think that the sheer volume of units um, is, is daunting for the town. This isn't something that we've embarked upon before. Bill, is that fair? Oh, that's, that's correct, yep. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, when I look at this, um, I think I, I immediately jumped to, um, you know, some of the developments in, in Amherst. When I think about the ones that are definitely more geared towards undergraduate housing, you know, which would be, uh, you know, townhouse or, or some of the other units that are off of um, East Hadley Road. And mainly because of the contiguous nature of this. So I'm just wondering if you've given any thought to, is there a way, especially with the additional land acquisition to break any of this apart so that it's not as concentrated as it appears here? You know, Molly, that is a, that is a really good comment. And that, um, that wasn't our initial strategy, um, but we can certainly explore that. You know, just thinking off the top of my head is, you know, do you take some of these units and, and, and you know, kind of maneuver those into this kind of back lot area? I don't, I don't think we want to um, we want to touch the 14 acres of forest, but we certainly can look at, at breaking this up to kind of reduce the, the 
you know, the density of it. Molly, am, am I okay to jump in with comments? I'm not sure. This is my first time on Housing Economic Development Committee. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'm speaking as an architect who's, you know, for 10 plus years worked on multifamily developments across the country, but also as a Hadley resident. So my, my first comment is really, I don't think I have an answer for this. Um, I, I, I think you were right on the money that Hadley, Hadley needs more diversity in its housing inventory both in scale and, and type. And I think rental is a part of that, that model. Um, but one of the things that I, I have an issue with in town is, is the, the site selection for, for both residential and commercial developments. I feel like we're uh, you know, start, starting to encroach more in our open space, in our agricultural land, of which this is a pretty perfect example of a site. Where I don't know if it's productive agricultural land, but it certainly appears to be on Google Maps. Um, so just as a, as a general principle, I'm, against development of previously undisturbed land. Uh, but I do think the goals and intent and improvement to housing stock is a value. I just don't know if this is the right site for it. Well, if there's one thing that we can't do is probably switch sites. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that, would be a, that would be a bit tricky. Adam's a pretty creative guy, but I don't know if we could pull that one off. <laughs> I guess my counter would be is that, you know, we, I mean, maybe we're putting too much, too much value on this 14 acre nature preserve, actually 23 acre, acre, acre nature preserve. But we, you know, we kind of look at this as um, it, it, it moving forward with this development. It, 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 it ensures that that 28, 23 acres doesn't get developed in perpetuity. I don't know if that adds any value for you guys, but, but that was our initial thinking. One, one thing too, um, I would, I mean, definitely appreciate the, you know, the comment, Justin, I think, you know, it's just being on the land acquisition side, it's very challenging trying to find, you know, the right piece of property and then even finding the, the owner that would even consider the idea of selling. Um, you know, we've certainly been looking in this area for honestly years, <laughs> um, and, and just by that, we're very excited to even be talking to you. Um, you know, strategically speaking, you know, we're just north of the University Business Park. You know, we're, we're very close to all of the retail. And um, mm -hmm. so I think there's just a, a natural benefit there, you know, with the Target, the Trader Joe's, Home Depot, Aldi, you know. So, and, and then just to our west, we're, we're near all of the you know, a lot of residential. So we're kind of in the heart of where we would like to be as far as proximity to residential proximity to retail. Um, you know, there's certainly a ton of other land that's way far out there. And we, we, we were mindful in our approach and not um, actually even calling people that had farmland because um we didn't want to go out way, way far out there. You know, we wanted to be kind of near, near the action. Yeah. If I can clarify my, my comment just a bit, I, I think it was probably directed more at the committee in the town uh, and planning board. And I, I think, you know, what you're describing, cause I, I've been doing the same thing, trying to find sites and connect developers to them. But um, you know, I think there's a, a need for responsible densification in Hadley. And, and I, you know, I see the Route 9 corridor as a perfect example of where that would make the most sense. And like this project, if this were, I don't know, third of a mile south where the University Park office buildings are, I'd be all for it because it's previously developed land. But I think I'm just, uh, you know, as a resident, I'm concerned that we're gonna continue to slowly encroach onto our, our open space and agricultural land with, you know, relatively, uh, I don't know, sparse, not not too dense development. And even though it's it's increasing our housing stock and our inventory, I think you know, we as a town need to start to consider what development practices do we want to encourage and how can we uh, update maybe potentially our zoning or uh, incentives to bring some of that development to sites that, that probably deserve it. So um, Adam, Todd, just a question on the density and the number of units in this development um, has any is there any thought or 
ability to downsize this mm -hmm. or in order for the you know again the math to work do you have to have this level of density i can i can talk on that i think you know we so right now we're at 232 units you know it's it's a balancing act just kind of what i was alluding to earlier just construction costs i mean today interest rates you know uh absolutely i think we have some room there um you know could we go to 220 215 you know down to 205 you know i think so i mean we you know there there are costs that we'll incur with the the sewer and the infrastructure and the utilities um and so we you know we're trying to balance that just in, internally um yeah but I mean, we want to, we're, we have a willingness to work with the town of Hadley and, um, you know, we, we, we really didn't want to come in with, you know, 400 units. We wanted to, to be, it's, it's a low density development and, you know, with this many acres, I mean, we've, we've done significant, we've doubled the size. So we wanted to come in with a, a reasonable density number, but to, to your question, I think we have some room there um, to lower the, the unit count. And, um, you know, I, I think we're also excited about the, just the, the added nature preserve and truly having that be a, a community benefit and, you know, giving, giving some activity there and, and having a nice parking lot where people can, you know, bring their kids and play with, you know, bocce ball, pickleball court, you know, a nice gazebo and, um, I think that's a really can be a really nice um, and interesting, you know, nature preserve, especially with just all the trees and, and walking trails. I think it'll be very uh, frequently used. And, and that's, that's very much our, our goal. And Bill, would you mind, I think it'd be beneficial um, just for the whole group. Could this, this is the old, uh, what we refer to as the Bab farm. Is that right? I believe so. Right. So the zoning is currently agricultural strong. residential. Okay. And of course, our zoning is one dwelling per lot. Mm -hmm. So um, this would not be allowed under current zoning. Mm -hmm. uh, the what you call the nature preserve is functionally undevelopable anyway. Um, probably two thirds of it lengthwise is zoned industrial but the industrial land cannot be accessed except by going across agricultural residential land which is not allowed in massachusetts so uh, it's uh not a lot you can do with it except maybe a solar field out there um i, I guess i'm just going to echo that i this this is huge uh, I'm not saying it's not well designed, but um, it's like nothing we have seen in Hadley. Uh, Winfield is on the order of 70 or 80 units. That's our next largest. Um, and um, I am not comfortable with the location. It's uh, really increasing the density substantially in a part of town that has higher density than other parts of town but is not high density by any reasonable metric um i think as a friendly 40b it's going to be a non-starter um without a huge community outpouring of community support for it um and uh, otherwise you're not you're not going there. I don't see community support for it. Yeah, I yeah, I think it's you know, as as Bill said, the largest um, development we have is significantly less than this, um, which is why I was going back to, you know, if there's a way to break it apart, if there was some sort of phase in but 
I, I think this will um, frighten away a lot of people. Yeah. I appreciate the addition of the nature preserve mm -hmm. and that brings down your uh, density numbers, but the actual development is pretty dense. And I think that's where you're gonna have a stumbling block with most of the residents in town. I'm thinking about how to try and solve those two problems. As Adam mentioned, we do have some flexibility in the unit count. Uh, and if we can drop the unit count slightly, I mean, not, you know, we're not going to end up with like 50 units. Uh, and we can spread them out and so that it doesn't feel as dense. Is, is that something you guys are with? Is that worth looking into? What do you, what do you guys think? I wouldn't waste your time. You're still talking something that's four times the size of it. You know, I mean, just because we haven't done it before, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't consider doing it. But I, I think as, um, as Justin had pointed out, you know, location matters. Uh, and I, I think most of the people in town are still gonna be looking at this as very much part of our residential and open space community, especially because at one point in time, it was a working farm. Yeah, I was, um, gonna, jump over I was gonna try and jump. Can you guys, are you, am I still sharing my screen? Yep. You are. Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Let me, let me turn over to this map here. So we are, uh, no. Down a bit. Down a bit, down a bit, down. I had, I had Just it up. north of the University Business here, Park. Here it is, right here. To your west, Todd. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So this is our site. Yeah, and I guess when we when we zoomed out um, in terms of density, you know, we we looked at all of this development here. Mm -hmm. And our, you know, our our first impression was as well. We we just kind of fit right into this this larger developed neighborhood. It's not like we're sitting out in the middle of nowhere, right? Now, I you know, I guess what we're proposing is slightly more dense than what's existing here, but you know, not off by a tremendous amount. I mean, these are these lots are not enormous. These these homes are pretty close together. Um, yeah, but I mean, if you, um, for the amount of acreage that you would be building on, right, not the, uh, you know, excluding the uh, the open space com or the uh, recreational component of it, um, I think you're still talking pretty significant density. Um, you know, if you were putting in a residential street that swung from North Maple to Rocky Hill, Mm -hmm. There wouldn't be 200 houses on it, right? Mm -hmm. We got the this university mm -hmm. park, this industrial park down here. Mm -hmm. um, One thing too is, you know, from the the site plan, we're going to be heavily landscaping this, so it, it's going to still have. I mean, the site is, you know, beautiful, and I think we're going to do our best to maintain that and heavily landscape it. So it's, it, you know, it's really going to be good looking and well landscaped from the street. And um, I'm not going to say you're not going to notice that it's there, but I mean, that that's kind of our goal. It's, it, it's almost a little retreat and, and get away from the, you know, from the, from the main roads there. So that, that's our goal is to landscape it, you know, appropriately so it's not just glaring off of the street and, and that's why we're you know we we didn't want to come in and have three four story garden products we we wanted to be low density with with our cottage development mm -hmm. okay well, uh, i guess if i could ask just one more question about that is uh mm -hmm. maybe more question to the you know residents here would a more a higher density you know three four story building uh, on a smaller pad with the rest of the site uh, preserved in perpetuity be more agreeable as opposed to developing you know the entire or at least half of the available site 
that listen if you guys think that sort of a concept gets traction we we could certainly look at it where we would go to more of a flat style building three to four stories um but yeah, you, i don't, you know, I don't know that there's going to be a lot of support for it you know from what i've heard from other residents but you know, I, I know that preserving of open space is a, is a really high priority. It's been identified in the master plan. It's been identified in the housing development plan. Um, so I, I think it's the open space piece that I'm, I'm the most concerned about. Uh, and I know density is, is a concern for others, but if the density occurred on a much smaller pad, I'm, I guess I'm questioning if that would be agreeable. Does, does anybody else have a thought on that? I, I mean, I, 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 could, I could see exploring that as an option. I mean, if, if we took all of these units and, well, you know, collected them into some slightly higher density buildings, you know, buried those kind of at the back of the site here, I, to Adam's point, I, I don't know if anybody's going to even know that we exist. The rest of this would just be left open. It could become part of the nature preserve. You know, the, all these sections that, um, that front North Maple and Rocky Hill. I would certainly find that more more palatable okay. um, for discussion than what I'm looking at here in terms of the you know the, the distribution of all of these units across all of this acreage. Yeah, understood. Understood. Okay. Um, yeah, I I think we we can we can certainly look into that. It it does not take us long to to um, you know. Uh, revise these plans. We, we do this all in-house. So um, and I guess I'll ask the question, is it worth us throwing together a plan and showing you putting our best effort, foot forward on, on a higher density pr uh, proposal that the goal is to minimize the visual impact on the, the rest of the community and preserve as much open space as possible? Yeah, I think it's going to come down to how many units you're talking, right. talking about, right? Yeah, I think we're, you know, without having the pro forma open, I think, you know, it's got to start with a two. Uh, we can probably drop to, you know, 200 units. When we get below that, it, it you know, the project just doesn't underwrite. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, I, again, I think it's just too big an ask to do something on this scale. Now we have started conversations about having different styles of housing. Yeah. Um, but uh, this would, uh, I, 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 just, I, I see a high risk that if, if this were to be put in with an unfriendly 40B, were we, were we below the, uh, the numbers, or if the numbers change, um, I just see this as killing the conversation about other housing units in town for maybe a generation. Um, what we've been looking at and talking about to date are things that would be adaptive reuses of uh, existing already developed properties. Um, this is just, uh, uh, the scale is just beyond anything that has been previously discussed. Um, functionally, you know, this is a conversation you have to have and take zoning articles to town meeting. Um, I think I could with a high degree of accuracy predict that the ZBA would not um, would not support a friendly 40B, again, as I said, without overwhelming community support. And I don't see that that is, I don't see that. Mm -hmm. One thing, I appreciate that, Bill. One thing too that we, we did look at is just occupancy from the available rental product and there's everything's occupied. So that just it means to us is there's an opportunity for more rental product, um, you know, giving more variety, giving more options to 
to people that are interested in renting. I, I mean, mm-hmm. especially just in today's day and age with what's, you know, interest rates are, are continuing to rise and, you know, people just honestly prefer to rent and, and, you know, they don't want to take care of their lawn and, and mess around with the roof and, and buy a the market is definitely on this. Yeah. I think the market's there and we, we really analyze right. that and, you know, bringing in a, a vibrant, new, exciting project that has a ton of great public amenities is, you know, I think there'd be a lot of great excitement around this, this project. And, and, you know, we're including 20 to 25% affordable housing. So we're, you know, we're increasing the affordable housing stock and, you know, bringing that as an added component to the, to the vision. Well, I, I think um, I appreciate you guys um, reaching out and, and wanting to put this in front of us tonight. Um, again, I think your goal was to get, get feedback, uh, good or bad, right? Yep. <laughs> project. So yeah, I, th- I think you're hearing a few consistent points here. Um, so, you know, kind of what I jotted down, you know, just the, the sheer density, um, the, and I'll call it sprawl of the project, the site selection, um, traffic impacts, um, you know, there's no question the demand is there. We're not, I mean, that's, that's an absolute, um, I don't think you'd have any trouble at all renting every single one of these units out in fairly short order. Um, but those are the challenges in, in uh, getting it built in the first place. So up to you, you know, if you uh, want to take, take our feedback tonight and, and take another pass at it. I mean, we're certainly happy to make time for you. Um, but it's going to be, I think, I think what you're hearing from everybody is it's going to be a, a pretty steep uphill climb. Understood. Um, thank you, Molly. I, when we, again, I thank everybody for the very honest and candid feedback. We very, we very much appreciate it. Um, in terms of in next steps, we're going to go back and huddle up and decide, you know, what our, what, you know, what we want to do moving forward. So I, I think what you just said is we would, if, if we decide to to change the plan of all the plan, we're coming back. We could we could meet with this group again and show you our progress. Is that kind of the next step? Do you think? Um, I, I'm not opposed to having you come back. Does anybody? I mean, if they want to come back, is everybody okay with that? Fine with me. I just I, I would like to know just just how much do you think you'd be able to scale it down if you do come back? You know, we're gonna it, 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 Crystal, thank you very much for the that's a that's a great question. I, I think we need to go back and take a couple days to to figure that out. Okay. So like I said, I think I think there and Adam Adam mentioned first, you know, there is some room to reduce the number of units and we can certainly to, to Justin's point, um, you know, work on the density and the location in order to try and limit the impact on the, the surrounding neighborhood for sure. So I, I think that's that's where we're going to start. How, how low can we go with the units and how can we arrange them in a way that has as little impact as, as possible on the surrounding? Um, I think we're going to. You know, we'll start looking at the traffic. I have a, Go ahead, sure. I have another question. You said that the output of the um, the water flow will go into Amherst, correct? Uh, sanitary for sanitary, question. yes, yes. Right. Now, are they going to want some retribution for this, some type of payment? What Are they accepting this, that the waste is going to go into their town from Hadley? It's a very good question, and the, the way I understand it, and, I, and I'm not a, I'm not the expert here, but I believe the Amherst Sanitary Facility has been sized to accept a, vol, a certain volume from from Hadley, um, and that has been part of a master plan that goes back f- uh, long before you know we started thinking about this project. Um, yes, and of course there is there will be a fee. Uh, that would be something that the that the project would have to bear on a on a, on a monthly basis. Okay. And then of course we would be responsible for um, for paying for all you know all the infrastructure. That isn't okay. that isn't a that isn't a cost that that any uh, either Hadley or or Amherst would have to bear. Okay. 
Yeah, and, and Crystal, all of all of this is these are this is conceptual, right? Yeah, okay, yes, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. I mean, this is this is not an engineered solution. This is just um, a first pass from a, a professional civil engineer. So this this is what we think we'd like to investigate. Of course. Okay. Well, thank uh, Adam, Todd, and Austin for your time tonight. Appreciate yeah, it. You. Ali, we appreciate it. You gave us much more than 20 minutes, and uh, we'll, we'll let you guys get on with your meeting. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks for having us, everyone. Appreciate Thank your you. time. Enjoy the evening. You okay. too. Bye. You too, Tom. <laughs> okay. Um, next on the agenda, uh, we have the uh, our for affordable housing update, and um, Bill has graciously volunteered to bring everybody up to speed on the Econolodge project, where we stand with that, and um, some of the information floating around about affordable housing. So we all. So have I should I should just uh, turn around to my other screen because Laura Baker from CDC is presenting at the Finance Committee tonight. As we speak. <laughs> uh, as we speak. Um, so the pro the uh, Econolodge conversion uh, was uh, given its first outing last month at the ZBA. Um, the ZBA reserved its rights uh, that we are a compliant community so that um, it, it has to be a friendly 40B. Uh, the next hearing will be next Monday. Next Monday? Yep, the yes. 20th. Uh, yeah, in the wrong month. <laughs> yes, the uh, the twentieth at seven, uh, by Zoom and in person. And uh, I think at the senior center, Bill, or I think it is at the library. Library, okay. Um. Uh, so they're going to answer some questions. They've been gathering some more information about some of the concerns that were raised uh, at the first meeting. And uh, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, that's about all I have to contribute on that. Uh, as far as I know, the state has not yet certified our actual number of affordable units uh, it should have been recomputed as of the 2020 census, but uh, that data set had not been released or it had not been accepted by Executive Office of Housing and Community Development as yet. So we're still working on our prior number, which I think is 12%, and we'll probably be a little lower. Uh, let me see if I have what I have here. Uh, we're uh, based on the 2010 census, um, we were at 12.59%. And that remains our number on, uh, until the new number is uh, accepted by the, uh, by the state. So it'll probably dip a little bit. With the O'Connor Lodge, it would increase somewhat and um well, they're they're correct what they uh said that if 25 20 or 25 percent of the units are affordable in a rental property all of the units are counted towards the inventory mm -hmm. um so that would be a big it'd be a huge boost um but um with the econolodge conversion 100 percent of the units will be considered affordable and on the inventory and it's an existing structure as opposed to new construction. So um, that's about where it stands at the moment. Uh, I know that Laura Baker has been going around to many boards. She was has been at the select board. She's at the finance committee tonight because they raised a number of questions at the last meeting. The uh, planning board voted to uh, encourage the um, uh, adoption, uh, the approval with uh, the maximum local set-asides and senior set-asides. Interestingly, Laura Baker did say at one of the meetings that across the universe of properties they manage, 
they find that they have about 40% senior citizen occupancy anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a, a sort of a twofer there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's, uh, that's about it. No, no huge developments. Um, uh, I know they're, uh, they're commenting on how quickly this is moving, but uh, this is a situation uh, when Winfield came in, the, um, the zoning board at the time had to act as the planning board does when basically a new mall comes in. They had to look at every aspect of the, of the development, parking, drainage, et cetera. The Econo Lodge has already been through site plan approval it's uh, in compliance with just about everything uh, that it needs to be in compliance with. So it really is just that one issue of, do we want to go from short-term rental to long-term rental on the site? Okay, thanks, Bill. I have a question yeah, on the Econo Lodge site. Is that 50 units or 63? It is going to be 50 apartments. I believe it may be 63 rooms currently. Okay. But I know to... that their presentation that they just did counted as 63 units towards Tetris uh, presentation was saying 63. I thought it was only 50. So it is only 50. It is, it is 50 affordable plus one manager unit. Right. But I believe 63 is the number of um, rooms, hotel rooms, hotel rooms that were available. So theoretically, the uh, if 63, that would mean, you know, to, if it was at full capacity, which rarely happens, but that would be upwards of 120 people, um, which would be a, a real crowd. Uh, okay versus uh well with the new configuration it's a combination of one bedroom and studios so there'll be more than 50 people but probably nowhere near 120. Mm -hmm. and i don't know i i'm assuming that that they were double uh bunking with the um when they had the, the students in there in the fall they were probably putting two in each room yeah Mm -hmm. And Bill, could you also mention too the um, the affordable housing trust fund? Um, there's recently been an addition of funds to that account as well. Yes, we uh, collected uh, sixty six thousand today from the um, a uh, residential subdivision that went in off of Shattuck Road. So. Um, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head what our uh, what our balance is, but uh, to we we're probably over. Well, we have uh, about 200 from um, the senior housing East Street Commons, uh, with more to come. Uh, we had 100 from CPA, and now another 66,000. So we're well on the way to a $400,000 affordable housing trust fund. Mm -hmm. and, and just bear in mind that, you know, as Bill keeps reminding me, clearly the, the goal of the affordable housing trust fund is to advance, you know, the, the opportunities for affordable housing in the town of Hadley. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the, I mean, the funds could certainly be used to purchase property. Um, but obviously $400,000 doesn't go very far. Mm -hmm. um, and Bill has reminded me that the law allows, uh, the rules allow for the funds to be used for things like um, consulting or, you know, um, efforts to advance the, the overall purpose of affordable housing in Hadley as well. So something we should just bear in mind. Oh, Crystal, you're muted if you're talking. Crystal, are you trying to say something?
You're on mute, Crystal. I didn't hear you. What did you say? I said you're muted. If, you, if you were talking to us, we couldn't hear you. Oh no, I was talking to myself. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to figure it out, but I didn't just to get together what I was going to say. Okay. All right. Sorry. That's okay. Um, okay. Uh, so the next agenda item then is uh, at the last meeting we started a conversation about um, to, to kind of leveraging off of what Justin was saying um, in terms of in, instead of kind of reacting to the projects put in front of us, is there any opportunity for us to do some visioning and the challenges that we all know that we have is we don't have a full-time planner. Um, we've got a part-time select board. We've got a part-time you know, elected planning board. Um, everybody's got their hands full. Nobody's, no, no individual or particular unit within the town is really responsible for any of this. Um, so our, our group was actually in part created to try to, to help move some of these ideas along. Um, so, one of the things we talked about at the last meeting was the possibility of leveraging some of the resources in our backyard vis-a-vis -vis the flagship campus of the University of Massachusetts um, and some of their building design folks to see if there might be any sort of appetite in uh, having them work with us on some sort of project where we might be able to reimagine uh, the Route 9 corridor. So Tony, um, sounds like you have made a little bit of headway there. If you could update the group. Yes, there's an appetite. Um, so um, I've spoken both with uh, Steve Schreiber, who's the uh, chair in the architecture department, and Henry Rensky from, uh, uh, from LARP, uh, Landscape Ar Architecture and Regional Planning, both of whom are interested in speaking with the committee around um, the ideas that you all have so that the, they can either shape a project for students um, and or um, recommend some other possibilities. So, um, you know, Steve would be looking at this much more through a, a classroom project type of approach um, in which his architecture students uh, would be able to um, help work on a project to, to vision uh, an adaptive reuse over, um, you know, on Route 9. Uh, that might be something that could be a, a starting point for a car conversation for uh, the community. Um, Henry also, you know, talked about that with some of his students um, in a number of different ways. He, he offered a few different options. One, you know, maybe a capstone project for, for an undergraduate student um, or a practicum for a grad student um, that would, you know, um, uh, both of which, you know, um, I think would just really, again, be dependent upon the appetite of, of the committee. Um, and then there's also the possibility of, of uh, one of the centers getting involved and, and Henry oversees the Center for Economic Development. Um, and so that is something where they would, um, you know, would require a contract. Um, but, you know, as he has mentioned, you know, they've worked with a number of communities and um, generally speaking that the price of these particular projects are often, you know, much lower um, than what it would be on any other kind of consultative basis. But I think the the one thing that, you know, for everybody is that they're, you know, both Steve and Henry are willing to speak to the committee, kind of get a sense of what the scope might be. And maybe after that, they would be able to make recommendations on paths forward that they see that might meet up with the objectives of looking at the Route 9 corridor. So. Um, but both were very excited about the possibilities. So, and I guess this is a question for maybe for Bill, because the planning board's the, the primary point of contact with the um, planning commission. Mm -hmm. if, if we wanted, well, a couple of questions. One is if we wanted to pursue this, um, I would imagine we would want, want to go back to you know, the planning board in particular, and also the select board again, so that we're not getting out ahead of something, letting them know um, this, this is something we think is a, a worthy effort um, to make sure that they're okay with that. But then number two, I'm just thinking in terms of, I mean, as a group, this isn't an area of expertise we have in terms of 
doing charrettes and, and, and everything that would ultimately be involved here and making sure you've got the right people at the table. Um, is it something you think that somebody from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission could kind of at least help us frame this or, or make sure we're not going down the wrong path here? Or what do you think? Uh, I suppose we can talk to uh, Ken Comia about uh, options. We're at the moment, we're kind of uh, up to our elbows in uh, getting ready for town meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it would not be a, um, it'd, it'd be a longer term project, but we're, I'm sure we're talking about, we're looking into fall, uh, fall 23 at the earliest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it sounds like we would be, um, especially since we're running up against the, um, I mean, by the time we meet next, if, if Steve and or Henry were to come in for the April meeting, we're already getting to the point where we're nearing the end of the semester. But the one, you know, the one way to frame it too is just that, you know, from a, from a classroom perspective, you know, I, I can see, you know, Steve really um, you know, using this as just a, a classroom project for his architecture students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing, of course, is binding, right? I mean, this is all about, yeah. you know, just launching a conversation about what things might look like or what they might look like through the eyes of, of these, um, you know, of the students. Um, you know, I think is if you're looking at it, something from a more formal perspective, you know, then that might be a more formal and binding perspective or something that that's leading to something more formal, then that's probably a larger conversation with Henry and his group. So uh, <clears throat> decades ago, I was a student at UMass and I was in decades? the landscape art. I was in the landscape architecture program. So we did projects like this. Um, we worked, uh, one of the projects I did was with the town of Granby, Connecticut they needed a master plan and they didn't have a planner. So they hired, you know, they reached out to several universities and were the ones who did that. Um, also, it, I think it would be good. So what it is, is the, the students, they have studios and they work on a particular project for either half a semester or a full semester, depending on the depth of the project. And I think maybe how much uh, money the town is willing to give the department um, for a full-blown project. But then at the end of it, they do presentations. So you'll have like 12 to 20 students who say we asked them to look at um, the Hampshire Mall and how would they foresee it to be a mixed use, residential uh, entertainment, commercial zone. So then during the presentation, you have 15, 20 different versions of what it could look like, and it's open to the public. And, you know, it would be a good starting point for the residents of Hadley to see it in a different light and see the possibilities that are there. Instead of just being thrown one project that this is how we want to do it, you know. And then that way we could also use it to get community feedback. Yeah, I don't think it would be a throwaway to do it, right? I mean, no. just starting the conversation, um, we lost Tony, obviously. I'm just going to text him and see if he, if he ran out of juice or what happened there. I don't think you said anything offensive, Sean. <laughs> no, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, and you know, for what it's worth, you know, when I kind of initiated this conversation with Steve, um, I've also talked to Lynn Gray at the Pyramid Group, who manages the Hampshire Mall and Holyoke Mall. But uh, really, it's about it's about I mean, visioning is the perfect word for it. It's about kind of putting something on paper, and you know, with the student work, they're allowed to be creative. You know, and to some extent, they don't have the same rules that we have, uh, so they can kind of think outside the box and and. Not all of it is going to be inherently valuable, but some of it is going to be generative. And you know, those ideas can inspire communities and, and show them what potential exists there. 
Uh, and in particular, you know, my passion is, is this Route 9 corridor where I continue to see development of single story strip malls and parking lots. And there's so much potential, especially around the Hampshire Mall, where I don't think anybody would argue against more density. Um, and, and the Pyramid Group has experience with this exact process and have seen upticks in business and um, improved foot traffic to retailers and more interest from retailers. So there's a potential for a project like this to be a real generator economically and socially. Um, and I think, you know, it's a real low to no risk to go out to the, the architecture program or the LARP program and have a student do this work uh, because then they, they can contribute to something real and we can benefit from their vision. Justin, the only the only thing I would caution against and what you've said is I think you used a word um, that would lead one to an absolute conclusion that nobody would challenge. Um, you just haven't lived in Hadley quite long enough. Justin, so. <laughs> that's that's fair. Um, you know, I, I look at like, uh, you know, the Mountain View Mall and the collapse of that mall and then, you know, subsequent conversion. And right now, you know, for I can't, I don't want to speak to their, their economics, but the pyramid group is dealing with, you know, obviously the Hampshire mall has been underperforming JC Penney, who knows how long they're going to last. They've got parking lots that are probably at 20% capacity most of the time. So I, I think when I say nobody would be in opposition, I just mean like, we're not, we're not replacing something that's a vital use to the community. You know, it would be potentially uh, uh, you know, phased projects that could lead to uh, expanded growth along that corridor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, Tony texted and said, it looks like he may have lost internet connectivity because he said he's trying to get back in. He has power, but it's just spinning. Um, but he said if he's not able to get back on uh, to let him know, uh, based on our conversation, if we would like to have Steve and or Henry in at our April meeting. I think so. Yep. Okay. And for whatever reason, the scheduling doesn't work, May. Um, but one of those... One of those two. All right. And what do you think in terms of um, just bringing it back to to uh, the other powers that that be? I mean, I I think it'd probably be premature until we've we've actually spoken with Steve and Henry, and then we can be more specific with planning board and and select board. Does that make sense? Is, yeah, this is all very uh, blurry at the moment. We're not, don't know what we're talking about for budget. Um, so yeah, we need to, we need more detail. Um, mm -hmm. Molly, when is the next meeting? Um, so we put it on for, is it the third? <laughs> third. The third Thursday of every month. Oh, oh, it's the same same date. Oh, okay, I thought it was yeah. A we decided date. to go there, and actually, just let me look. Is um, just thinking about the month of April. So that's the April twentieth. April four twenty. All right. Okay. Is that going to be a problem for anybody with school? Is that school vacation week? I'm assuming. I think it is, but. I don't have an issue with it. Okay. Um, and Tony's kids are all grown and gone out of out of that, so it's not an issue for Tony either. So, Tony, I don't know if you um, when exactly you got audio back on, but um, we would definitely love to have Steve and Henry at the next meeting if possible. If April doesn't work, then then maybe May would be the default. Let, let me ask them. Um, I, I got kind of got lost when Sean was going down memory lane of, of um, you know, just right after Granby, Connecticut. So um, sorry about that. I have no idea what happened. Um, you all froze first. So I thought it was you, but alas. So yeah, I will um, let them know. Um, and um, so April 20th. Great. Yeah. So one, one thing that we have to be mindful of as we inch through the end of March is that uh, the great and general court has not yet extended Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we just have to keep an eye on that. Uh, okay. the, the bill that passed the state house calls for an extension of remote 
to March 30 of 2025. But that still has to go through the Senate and get the governor's signature. So um, the last time it was something like the 28th of March that everything was extended. So Bill, would that also count for an advisory committee like this one as opposed to one that has voting power? I don't know. Okay. Um, it's probably something that we may have to, uh, may have to check somewhere up the line. And Sean, the only thing I would say in terms of a testimonial for the UMass program is that my first apartment graduating from college was in the Grandview. Um, <laughs> having driven through Grandview after having moved there many months ago, it does look much more attractive. So that must have been very good work that you did. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully they uh, got some good ideas. No. Okay, um, so that's all, all we had for an agenda tonight. Is there anything else that anybody wants to bring up that was unforeseen or anything that, that you'd like to have added to the next agenda? Um, we'll, we'll know obviously the outcome. I would, well, I shouldn't say that. I, shouldn't, um, I think it's a good bet that we may know the outcome of the ZBA uh, decision by the time we meet again. They, they certainly can always extend it um, if they choose to. But we'll be able to um, have more clarity on that topic as well. Well, there's still, uh, Laura Baker is still talking with the Finance Committee. Okay, so. good. So I guess that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. All right, anything else tonight? I don't think it's directly housing and economic development. It's sort of economic development. Uh, the planning board is actively working on a uh, food truck ordinance, uh, zoning bylaw, and um, something, um, we're not sure if it's quite ready yet for uh, event venues. Uh, we, uh, the building inspector called to our attention that the same person had uh, put in three orders for um, a tent permit last summer. They happened to have a, a lovely view, apparently, um, and it was unclear whether they're renting space for events or whether um, they had a lot of family parties that year. So that's the kind of thing we're trying to try to get a handle on so that um, the, uh, the house next door to you doesn't turn into a party house suddenly and without notice. A wedding venue that you were Wedding expecting. venues, uh, <laughs> graduation venues. Uh, it's not going to address anyone doing anything for their for them, themselves. But uh, if you're going to make a business out of using your property in the agricultural residential district, we'd like to have a conversation with you. Um, and likewise, food trucks, we'll see what comes out of that. But uh, we're just trying to get that to town meeting to regularize things has there been a really? so it, it's on the economic development i like to remind yeah. us that we're economic originally this was the yeah. economic development committee housing kind of slipped in as a uh adjunct yep. um is the, you're planning on having the food truck uh bylaw for this next town meeting yes we're we're hoping um and probably not too heavily regulated in the business in the business right. districts, uh, because those are since we have no public parking. Unlike Amherst, we don't have a problem with food trucks parking on the street in front of a restaurant. Uh, right. We really have a situation here that if you want a food truck, uh, you, you might compete with Dunkin' Donuts a little bit. But if you want a food truck for an event at your store. Um, that's probably not going to be a problem, but if someone wants to put a food truck in a residential district, agricultural residential district, um, it's going to make a difference on 
how big a lot they have. And this will just be for zoning. There will be health regulations as well. Uh, I guess, again, it, it spills a little bit over into economic development, but uh, this year we have a half-time health inspector employed by the uh, Board of Health. And for the next fiscal year, on July 1, it's going to go to a full-time position. <clears throat> So um, we're getting out there and taking care of some, taking care of business, so to speak. That's assuming the budget passes, Bill. Right? Right. Well, it's balanced. <laughs> it's, it's balanced. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's certainly the hope. Uh, yeah, there's always opposition. Yeah, but that's, that's uh, definitely a goal. Yeah, well, that's the thing about a nonpartisan races in small towns. You still have to choose up sides. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks for that, Bill. And um, we'll look forward to hearing more about that as you guys get closer, too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. Everybody's good. Thanks for being here. We'll see you in a few weeks. Okay. Thank you. Have all a good right. night.